Hi there and welcome back. So uh, in the previous videos, uh, we have been talking about branch points, the different kinds of branch points, algebraic and logarithmic branch points. Uh, for instance, one example of an algebraic branch point is a function of the form z to the power 1 over n, where you have a branch point at z equals 0, where n is an integer and you have a branch point at z equals 0, and it's an algebraic branch point because it has a finite number of branches. An example of a logarithmic branch point is uh, uh, the log function itself. Uh, whereby you have a branch point if you have if you have a function of the form log of c then you have a branch point at z equals zero and uh, no matter how many times you wind around the origin in the z plane you do not come back to the value of the function you started off in the w plane and therefore we classify this as a logarithmic branch point now in the process of talking about the complex log function and its uh, and how it gives rise to a logarithmic branch point we also discovered uh, a definition of the complex log function and uh, in this particular video, let's use that definition to sort of uh, think about both algebraic and logarithmic branch points in a more unified way using a function of the form z to the power of alpha, where alpha could be any arbitrary power. So we'll use this function as a prototypical example and uh, use the definition of the complex log function to actually think of both algebraic and logarithmic branch points in a somewhat more unified way. And um, so let's see how that comes about. Um, and just as a quick uh, review, uh, the uh, we talked about the complex log function as a natural generalization of the real log function and uh, in Bolivia we started off with uh, looking for a function log z that satisfies the relation that e to the power of log of z is z and in the process we figured out that log of z uh, is of the form log of modulus of z plus i times argument of z now the argument of z is inherently multi-valued uh, and in order to sort of write that feature out more explicitly we can write, it, write this expression in the form log of r plus i times theta plus 2 m pi where m is an integer where m is an integer um, so so from here we see that as we wind around the origin um, where m is actually the winding number as we wind around the origin uh, the, the imaginary part of the log function keeps moving away <coughs> from the value we started off with. So for instance, if we started off with theta, then as n increases, we keep moving away from that value. And therefore, um, this function has a logarithmic branch point at z equals 0. Um, now, and, and we can extract single value branches from this function by, by drawing, drawing a branch grid from z equals 0 all the way to infinity, uh, so that we can restrict the range that theta takes to a half open interval of length 2 pi. So, uh, so now in this particular video, let's use this definition of the complex log function <coughs> and talk about functions of the form wz equals z to the power of alpha, where alpha could be any uh, any of the different choices. For instance, alpha could be an integer. Uh, it could be a rational number, or something that we haven't talked about before, which is it could also be a rational number. And, 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 and the way we work this out, we'll also see how this, this definition helps unify the ideas of algebraic and logarithmic branch points. And, 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 and it also provides a way to sort of remember these different ideas uh, somewhat more simply. So, uh, so let's do that. So what we do is we will use this definition of the complex log function and plug it into this expression first. Uh, and then and then raise uh, this expression to the power of alpha and keep alpha arbitrary to begin with and then we'll analyze these different cases <coughs> so if you plug this definition definition into this expression uh, what we find is that um, e to the power of log of r plus i times theta plus 2 m pi is z so you've just put in the definition of log of z in the exponent here <coughs> And this gives us e to the power of log r plus i theta plus 2 m pi is z. And now we raise both sides this, of this expression to the power of alpha. So if you if we raise both sides to the power of alpha, uh, we will have e to the power of alpha log r plus i alpha theta plus i 2 alpha m pi equals z to the power of alpha. Now, Let's assume that, uh, or let's sort of think of this expression. If you look at this this expression, this is log r plus i <coughs> uh, alpha log r plus i alpha theta. And if you go back and look at this expression, um, 
we, we, we can think of this part of the expression, which is log r plus i theta, as one of the branches or the principal branch uh, of, of the log function that we've chosen, and then 2m pi for m, uh, m, m not being 0 for other values of m, gives rise to different sort of branches of this function. Um, so we can use that idea and sort of separate this expression out from this particular factor and write this expression as the principal branch of z to the power of alpha. So the principal branch is nothing but e to the power of alpha log r plus i alpha theta. And then we have the additional phase e to the power of i to alpha m pi equals z to the power of alpha. So this is a uh, nice way of writing this expression z to the power of alpha. And we, you, now we now use this uh, sort of equation to talk about the different cases and see uh, what kind of branch points or if at all uh, any branch points come about for these different choices. So let's do that now. So we have uh, z to the power alpha is z to the power alpha principal branch. And then we have the factor e to the power i, um, 2m alpha pi. <coughs> so let's begin with the case when alpha is <coughs> an integer. So let's start with alpha being an integer, let's say n, uh, where n is some integer, n is integer. Now in this case, if you look at this factor, this, this e to the power i to m alpha pi, uh, we see that um, e to the power i 2 times m times n times pi, uh, we have e to the power i 2 times m times n times pi, where n times n is an integer. So an integer times 2 times pi <coughs> will always give us 1, or, or in other words, e to the power of i times 2 pi times an integer will always give us 1. Therefore, z to the power of alpha is actually z to the power of alpha principal branch times 1, because this factor is always 1 when alpha is an integer. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us that if you raise, uh, if you're talking about a function of the form z to the power of alpha, where alpha is just any integer, then you just have one branch of this function. In other words, this is just an ordinary single value function. Single value function. And this is the only branch of this function. <coughs> now this is consistent with the way we have been talking about, or we have talked about functions of the form z to the power of n, in, in particular how it relates to analyticity and their geometry. Um, and, 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 and in any of those discussions, we, we did not have to talk about multiple values of that function. And that's because a function of the form z to the power of alpha or z to the power of n is inherently single value to this. It doesn't have multiple values. Um, so so th this is one of the cases. Um, so let's look at the other case. What happens when alpha is of the form 1 over n now, where n is an integer? Um, one example being 1 over 3, which is an example we worked out in detail. So what happens in this case? Then we have z to the power of alpha is z principal branch to the power of alpha. And then we have e to the power of i to m over n pi. Now, if you look at this expression, or rather this m over n, 2 times m over n pi, this expression is not necessarily an integer. So let's say, now m is an, uh, m is an integer, that, uh, that, that, so let me just try that, m is an integer. So let's say you begin with m equals 0. Uh, when m is 0, we see that z to the power alpha is z to the power alpha principal branch, so that's one of the branches. Uh, now you could vary m, let's say it's 1, then we find that uh, this factor is, uh, so let me just write it down, when m is 0, we have z to the power alpha is z to the power alpha principal branch. When m is 1, we have z to the power alpha is z to the power alpha principal branch, e to the power i, 2 pi divided by n. So we see that we pick up an additional phase, and that corresponds to a, a, a different branch of the function. So in the same way, we can actually vary m from 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1, um, but not beyond that. Because when m is n, when m is n, then this factor becomes e to the power of i 
m cancels n, so it's e to the i 2 pi, which is 1, which brings us back to the case when n was 0. So, if you have, a, if you have alpha of the form 1 over n, um, then m can take n distinct values. So, m can take n distinct values, n distinct values, and these m distinct values are the n different branches, or n branches of the function, of multi-value function. So this will give rise to an algebraic branch point, because there are a finite number of branches, there are n branches, algebraic branch point of order n minus 1. Um, and this is again similar to, uh, this, this, this again sort of uh, coin, um, is, is a generalization of the case when n was one third. Uh, when n was 3, sorry, and then we have alpha as one third, in, in which case we found that there are three distinct values or three different branches of the function. So when alpha is of the form 1 over n, we have an algebraic branch point of order 1, uh, of order n minus 1, which means there will be n distinct branches of the function. Um, and, and notice how this sort of comes about just by using the definition of the complex log and raising it to the power of alpha. So, um, so, so that sort of this is how sort of the algebraic branch point, this is sort of we can unify the notions of algebraic and logarithmic branch points using uh, the form of the complex log in a, in, and, and study a function of the form z to the power of alpha. Now we can generalize this idea further uh, and not just consider function of the form 1 over n, but rather any rational number of the form, let's say p over q, uh, where this is reduced to its lowest order. So some rational number reduced to lowest order. So for instance, uh, if p over q could be of the form 2 over 3. Now in this case, uh, we will have three distinct branches. Uh, notice that the factor 2 does not create multiple branches because a function of the form p over q would give rise to a phase which is e to the power of i uh, 2 um, p uh, m divided by q times pi. Now m times p or p times m will not create multiple branches, it's just an integer. It's only the denominator that will give rise to multiple branches. Uh, and so in this case, we have q distinct branches, or we have a branch point of order q minus 1. Um, and, and, if m, and if p is 1, then we are back to the case 1 over q, uh, or 1 over n, which is what we talked about just a moment ago. Uh, so in this case, one of the things to sort of just be careful about is that we should reduce this rational number to its lowest form. So for instance, if you're given, uh, let's say, alpha is 4 over 6, then this does not have six branches, but rather we can reduce it to its lowest form, and this will give you two thirds, and that will have three distinct branches. Um, and uh, if you have something like alpha is uh, five over twenty, for instance, then you can reduce it to one over four, and you'll have four different branches, and so on and so forth. So this is what happens uh, when you have uh, when alpha is a rational number reduced to its lowest order. We again have an algebraic branch point of order q minus 1, which means you have q distinct branches. Um, so, so we have started two cases, alpha being an integer, gives rise to an ordinary single valued function, alpha being a rational of the form p over q, which give rise to a multi-valued function with q distinct branches. And that brings us to the last case, what happens when alpha is an irrational number? When alpha is an irrational number. <coughs> now again, if you look at this expression, uh, we have um, e to the power of i to m times alpha times pi. So let's say we begin with m equals 0. Um, so when m is 0, we have z to the power of alpha is z to the power of alpha principal branch. Now how many distinct values can m take so that we are back to the principal branch? Well, m is an integer, so we can only increase it in units of 1. Uh, so if, if we increase m, uh, Will m times alpha ever give rise to something which is again an integer? No, because alpha is an irrational number. So in fact, no matter how many times we wind around the origin, so the origin will be the branch will be a branch point in this case, m times alpha will never be an integer. And therefore, no matter how many times we wind around the origin, uh, we never come back to the principal branch of the function, or any value of the function that we started off with. Um, 
So, this particular case, when alpha is an irrational number, actually gives rise to a logarithmic branch point. Um, and again, this is because m times alpha, where alpha is an irrational number, will never give rise to an integer, and therefore this, uh, th this particular phase will never be 1 which is what you require to come back to the value that you began with. Um, so, just as a quick summary, um, when alpha is an integer, then we have, um, so alpha um, could be an integer. In this case, we have single value functions, a single value function. When alpha is a rational number, then we have an algebraic branch point. We have multi-value function with, with an algebraic branch point. And when alpha is an irrational, we have a logarithmic branch point. Um, so I hope uh, this was of some use. And in particular, how this expression sort of helps remember the different cases, like an algebraic and uh, uh, logarithmic branch point, the difference between the two. Because uh, because when alpha is an irrational, you see that we can never come back to the value that we began with, no matter how many times we wind it on the origin. Um, so this is a somewhat simpler way to remember these concepts. And also, um, in the process, we have talked about a very general function of the form z to the power of alpha. Um, uh, and, and the case where alpha is irrational was something that we haven't talked about before. Um, so uh, yeah, um, let's let's talk more about these ideas in future videos. And I hope uh, this sort of uh, unified view was was of some use. Uh, thanks for watching.